So today we have a pretty cool product. This is the MSI GeForce GTX 480 Lightning. Now there haven't been a whole lot of non-reference GTX 480s, but this is definitely as non-reference as they come. It uses a custom cooler, so this is a Twin Frozer 3. Now, please note that all of the other GTX 480s that I'm aware of that come with aftermarket air coolers are triple slot. This one is dual slot. And even with a dual slot cooler, they've achieved better cooling than the stock heatsink. It also features their Power 4 architecture, which is Power 4 extreme overclocking, including a 16 phase PWM, which can provide, yeah, it's okay, so it's double the phases of a reference GTX 480, and in order to deliver a ton of power to it, you've actually got two 8 pin connectors and one 6 pin connector for power. You've got Pro Adalyzer. Hmm. Features incredible capacitance and crazy low ESR, so to optimize the power supply for extreme overclocking. Oh, okay, cool. All right, we've got copper moss. All right, so new generation MOSFET with built-in heat spreader. That's pretty cool too. We've got the super ferrite chokes, high C cap. This is all military class stuff here, as well as all solid caps. Triple over voltage, which we first saw with the Hawk, the GTX 460 Hawk edition. And then we also have Lightning Power Layer, which is a unique PCB design for the GPU memory and power layer, eliminates power, increases power supply stability and eliminates power noise and ripple. All right, so there are lots and lots of layers. All right, let's keep going down here where we have dual nine centimeter PWM fans at its 90 millimeter. Dual four in one heat sinks. So dual four in one heat sinks cover on the front and rear of the PCB to dip. Oh, okay, I think they mean it has a, a front and a back plate. And then you've also got like a unisink here. So you've got uh, cooling for the VRM as well as the memory. Super pipe technology, which means big fat, thick heat pipes, high density fins, and a nickel plated copper base. Wow, that took a long time. Fortunately, the back doesn't really say anything that the front didn't already tell us, and we can finally get this guy opened up. Now, there aren't a whole lot of these made, so you can consider this basically like limited edition. All right comes in a huge box, as you've probably already noticed, and let's have a look at what accessories we get with the GTX 480 Lightning. First, we get a six pin to eight pin adapter. Okay, that's PCI Express power. Another six pin to eight pin adapter, and then a dual Molex to six pin adapter. Mind you, if you don't have a power supply that's already capable of powering this card, then you need to reevaluate your build priorities. Here are the plugins for the voltage checkpoints. And then we also have a DVI to VGA adapter as well as another, oh no, rather, yeah, DVI to VGA and DVI to HDMI. So go ahead and put that back in there. This card is heavy. Wow. All right, we got some bubble wrap in there. Down here, we looks like we have a CD of some sort that uh, you'll probably throw away. Oh, here, wow, it actually comes with an HDMI cable. Look at that. Okay. It comes with the Afterburner software as well as the uh, NVIDIA drivers, quick user's guide, and last but not least, a Lightning Series little template thing. All right, let's look at the card. So I'm just gonna put this back together so that I can put the card on here to demo it. This thing is impressive looking. So the first thing we see through the packaging is the back plate that covers the entire back of the GPU. Now this is, okay, it's non-reference and even non-standard, this PCB. You can see that the PCB clearly goes higher than the PCI bracket on the back of the card. So you've got an additional, oh, it looks like about a three quarter inch layer here where they've actually uh, housed a lot of the interesting features. So they've got some components mounted there. They've got all of the V checkpoints here, and then they have all of the power plugs also on that little um, riser part of the PCB itself. All right, so let's have a look at the cooler. This is a dual slot cooler, as I mentioned before, and you've got about, eh, about half of the back IO plate for rear exhaust. So that means that probably about, wow, probably not much, probably about a quarter of the airflow from this fan here is gonna go out the back of the case. The rest of it is going to be released into the case. So you can see the ventilation here in the back. And then there's also room for the air to exit in many other parts of the cooler. So you can uh, kind of reach down there. Here you can see the super pipe. So we've got one 
big long super pipe here and then we have another shorter super pipe so those are the thick heat pipes and then we also have several regular heat pipes this uses a PCI Express 16x interface so that's one of the only standard reference things about this card all right, you can clearly see the Unisync here. So if you actually removed the Twin Frozer 3 cooler from the top of it, you could probably mount GPU only blocks. And as long as you've got some airflow over the card, I'm sure you could actually run it that way. You've got two SLI fingers, which means we've got support for two-way as well as three-way crossfire. There's a nice little MSI logo here. So you can see that the GPU is actually right under there. That's why we do have some ventilation holes here. All right, we've got uh, more VRMs here. We've got more ventilation holes here. And what are we actually cooling with this thing? I'm just trying to look under the back plate to see if I can... Uh, I don't think it's actually cooling anything. I think the point of it is more for aesthetics than anything else. So in terms of connectivity options, once again, we are non-standard. We have gold-plated connectors and we have a variety of different flavors. We have two DVI connectors, one HDMI and one display port. And what else we got here? Okay, we got more heat pipes up at the top. I think I already showed the top. Why don't we just get kind of some good angles of the card and you can uh, you can sort of check it out for yourself here, actually here. Oh, I should probably remove the uh, plastic shroud, shouldn't I? Yeah, let's do that. There you go, now you can see it better. It just completely slipped my mind. There we go. So now you can see the Twin Frozer 2 in all of its glory. There's the 90 millimeter fans. You can see the aluminum fans are very dense. So what that means to me is that these fans probably have to generate a pretty good amount of static pressure in order to get satisfactory cooling on this card. Very impressive. Also large. That is all. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips.